Praise the Lord. Please say hello to somebody. It's always wise to it's always wise to say hello to someone. You never know who is gonna give you a lift. You may you may yet ignore a person who is, is going to give you a lift, huh? And a very good welcome to all of you. We're very glad and, and blessed to have you today at, uh, at Fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And I would like to start by, by challenging us. And I'd like to challenge us based on our relationship with Jesus. And I want to ask you, how do you relate with Jesus? How do you relate, to, how do you relate with him? And how do you know him? Do you simply know him as your savior? Or do you simply know him as this person that you run to when you have a crisis? Do you actually have a functional relationship with Jesus? Is it something that you can quantify? Is it a relationship that is so solid? That you know you can count on Jesus at any time? Or is it a relationship of convenience? All of us have those relationships. We have relationships of convenience. We have those relationships we, we truly and deeply care about. We have relationships we are willing to protect with our very own lives. So my question tonight for you is, who is Jesus to you? And how well do you relate with Jesus? You know, how well you relate with Jesus defines your entire Christian walk. It defines everything that you do with him and in him, through him, and for him. But once your relationship with Jesus is not defined, then everything else is going to struggle. If your relationship with Jesus is on and off, that means your prayer life will also most likely be on and off. And if your prayer life is on and off, that means the results you get from the Lord when you go to pray will also be on and off. So how persistent are we in our relationship with Jesus? Shall we stick with the Lord when things are good and when things are bad? Persistence defines our relationship with God. And most of all, it defines your relationship with God when it comes to prayer and answered prayer. I'll tell you the most unfortunate thing today in the body of Christ. The Bible says that the people who know they are God shall be strong and they shall do exploits. But I want you to know today that the most defeated people are the Christians. The most defeated people are the Christians. So it's either we don't know our God or we don't trust him. So that means it's possible we could be in a relationship of convenience. You don't really trust the person. But you love him anyway. You love him well enough to stick with him even when you don't trust him. But if that is how we define our relationship with Jesus, then our Christian work is going to suffer. So why do we have in the body of Christ the most defeated people, the most challenged people, the most afraid people, it is simply because we have not known the God 
that we have believed. If we had known the God that we had we have believed that he actually does own the entire universe. If we had known that he controls absolutely everything that would change our relationship and it would change how we see the Lord. So I would like to ask us a question today. How many times have we given up on Jesus? How many times have you given up on waiting on the Lord? How many times have you started plans and you've given up because they become too big for you? And how many times have you given up on your God-given destiny simply because you feel God did not come through for you at the time you thought he would come through for you? How many times have we given up on asking and seeking God for that miracle and that healing and that restoration? So the question today is how long have you been waiting? And yet the secret to victory in the Christian life, it is not how well we pray, but in how well we persist in God. So could it be that victory is eluding you because you are not willing to wait a little bit longer? So how big are your plans? Are they bigger than Christ? How big is the dream that God has given you? That dream can only manifest in as far as you are willing to persist on your knees in prayer. Whether things are good or things are a bad. Whether you feel like it or you don't feel like it. Because should you quit, the world will judge you so harshly. So I'd like to read for you from the book of Luke. In Jesus' own words, Luke chapter 18. Now the Lord gives us a secret. And he's speaking to us about a very important secret, Luke 18, to victory in our Christian walk, the missing link. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. And saying there was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. And now there was a widow in that city and she came to him saying, Get justice for me from my adversary. And after he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I do not fear God, nor regard man, and yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, unless by her continual coming she wears me. And then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. And shall not God avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him though he bears long with them. Sometimes we have this big thing that we've been waiting for the Lord for. But you are so comfortable praying for it. A couple of days. And then you can fast a little bit. A couple of days. Then when the answer doesn't come, one week, one week the answer doesn't come. And you say, I think the Lord doesn't answer prayer. Maybe I'm praying wrong. Have you put yourself in the shoes of Abraham? God promises him a child when he's 75. But the fulfillment of the promise does not come until 25 years later. Had you been in Abraham's shoes, what would you have done? Now think about that business idea you've given up on. Think about that master's degree you failed to finish. Think about 
that career that you turn your back on. Think about that project that God has given you that you should have been able to begin and finish. But because things didn't work so well in the beginning, you walk away. But the Lord says there was this unjust widow. Nobody knows what her case was. But she never gave up. Every day, every day of her life, she walked to the court. And every day she kept telling the judge, the same thing. When will you give me justice? We have no idea how long this woman had to wait for justice. Sometimes that dream that you've been chasing so hard may need you to wait a little bit longer. Sometimes that miracle that has eluded you for so long may need you to wait a little bit longer. But the test of your faith is not in how well you pray. But the test of your faith is in how long you can hold on for the Lord before he is yet to answer. So how long have you been waiting? How long have you been waiting? How long? And yet the secret to the power with God is in our ability to trust and to depend on Jesus even when he seems not to be coming through as quickly as we expected him to. And this widow goes back and every day she's patient. Every day the judge says no. She goes back again. So, how many times have you heard the answer, no? How many times have you been told, it is impossible? How many times have you applied for that job and they've told you, we were not going to take you? You don't have the papers. How many times... And yet Jesus is saying, if this widow did not give up, and if this judge, who did not even fear God or fear man, if this judge at the end of the day was able to say, look, I don't fear any man. I don't even fear God. But so that this woman does not end up wearing me out, let me just give her justice. Have you considered... That God is not ignoring your crying? Have you considered that God is not underlooking your trouble? Have you considered that he knows that you've been asking for the same thing for two, three years? Have you considered that he's not deaf? And he's not blind to your suffering? Have you considered that he's watching? And that he knows that it's happening? Have you considered that he knows your trials and temptation? And persecution? Have you considered that he knows how difficult and how long you've had to wait? Have you considered that Jesus knows what it means to be in your shoes? If this poor widow could persist every day, every day, and Jesus is giving us a secret to the presence of God and to victory with God, and he says, if only you will persist. So how many times have you been told no? How many times have you been told it is not possible? How many times have you failed? Just how many times has the door been shut in your face? How long have you had to wait for that promotion? How long have you had to wait to get children? And how long have you had to wait to get married? How long have you had to wait for your healing? How long? One thing I will tell you, if you give up now, the world will not have mercy on you. They will tear you to pieces. If you give up now, you will never know what it means for the Lord to show up for you. The persistent widow. So how persistent have you been? How persistent are you? Now this is the Lord. And he's telling us about, so how persistent is your praying? How persistent? How persistent? Just how persistent have you been? How many times have you tried and failed? If you have failed, it gives you reason to try again. Because the Lord has guaranteed us that we must be persistent. 
If you have failed, try again. And if you fail, try again. And if you fail, you try again. And if you fail, you try again. And if you fail again, you try again. Because you don't know at what stage God will say yes. You don't know at what stage every door that you've been knocking on will open. Now this same widow went to the same judge. So where have you been turned down? Where has the door been shut for you? Where have things seemed to be impossible? That is the same place that God wants you to go back and knock again. Because you don't know at what stage God will cause them to remember you. You go back again and 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 you go again and you go again if the doctors say you won't get healed the lord says i am the lord who heals you you believe him for it you believe him for it if the world writes you off god has not written you off that's why you are alive this morning you believe again you believe again you believe again the secret to god is in us being able to be persistent if a widow can be persistent what about you if things don't work today they will work tomorrow if they don't work tomorrow they'll work the next day if they don't work the next day they'll work the other day if they don't work the other day they'll work the other week if they don't work the other week they'll work the other month if they don't work the other month they'll work in the next month if they don't work in the next month they'll work in the next year if they don't work this year next year they will work so tell yourself every day things will work somehow you have to say it every day that yes it will work persistent in the presence of God will get you where you're going but if you give up now the world will not forgive you the world is waiting for you to make one slip and they will laugh their heads off and they will crush you to pieces so go back again if this man things don't work June is a fresh new month as long as it is called today you have a reason to believe again because God is giving you a brand new opportunity to believe again if your project gets turned down do another one if your budgets get thrown out do another one if you get denied in this place try somewhere else if your application doesn't get accepted try something else if they say you're not good enough i can tell you a hundred may say you're not good enough but a hundred is not one thousand because god is still saying you are good enough but if you lift your hands and say well for me things are bad they will stay bad and that every day that you wake up God gives you a fresh new opportunity. Jesus gives you a new leaf. God gives you a new leaf. If you allow the failures of yesterday, the persecution of yesterday, the humiliation of yesterday to define your today you will not make much progress. If you allow yesterday's failure to define who you are today, you will not make much progress. You have to tell yourself every day that if that widow could persist and get a result, so will I. So will I. But you must persist. Because you don't know at what time. 
You don't know at what time things are going to work. You don't know that. You don't control that. Your responsibility is to get up every day and try again. You get up and try again. You rise up and try again. If things don't work that day, you sleep, you rise up in the morning and you try again. Every day you rise up and you try again. Now Satan is waiting for you to arrive to that position where you say, well for me it is impossible. I don't have the qualification for this job. They have denied me ten times. I don't have the capital for this business. No way. No bank will give me a loan. If the bank won't give you a loan, God will send you someone who does not need any interest on it. Amen. You have to know something about the Lord. If you will choose to quit today, you may never know the sound of victory. If you walk out today, you may never know the joy of victory. If you walk out, you will never know the reward of persistence. If you will stop praying and calling that name of Jesus, you will never know the true value of the price you've been paying. If you will give up now because everybody has said no to you and everybody says that who's going to marry you, you are so ugly, let me tell you. It is because you don't know the Lord. If you will hide your face in some bucket somewhere and say, I won't apply for this job because I don't have the qualifications for this job. It is because you don't know that with God, nothing is impossible. The only qualification that you need tonight is persistence. Amen. The only qualification you need is persistence. So how long are you willing to persist? When your soul is getting weary, tell your soul to persist. When your heart is growing faint, tell your heart to persist. When everyone around you is telling you it can't be done, remember the Lord says, if only you will persist. If everybody says that you can never get healed, that you can never get healed, that that cancer has eaten you up, that you can never get healed, remember that God has given you one more day so that you can cry out to him. There's only one person who can say that nothing can be done for me. Only a person who has been buried. And has been there long. But even in that case, God has proven to us. Lazarus was four days dead. Four days buried. And yet Jesus shows up and tells him to come out of the grave. What about you who is alive? What about you who is still breathing? So why do you feel discouraged? Because that sickness has persisted. Why do you feel discouraged? Because you don't seem to be getting the breakthrough you've been waiting for. The Israelites waited 430 years for them to be delivered. Brace yourself and declare war in prayer. Declare war in prayer. And declare that you will not let your knees get off the ground until there is a miracle. You pray, you pray, you pray, you pray until something happens. You keep praying. You keep believing. You keep pushing. You keep knocking. Define who you are. Define where you want to go. Decide on the destination and God will give you the means. Decide where you want to go and God will help you go there. But God has given us a vehicle that will give us the impossible results. And that vehicle, that vehicle is persistence. The secret is not in how well you pray. But in you being able to persist 
even when everything else seems to point otherwise. Will you persist in God? Will you persist in God? And if your dream is not bigger than your means, then you cannot persist. But if your dream is within reach, then God has got nothing to do with that dream. But if your dream is so big that you know it will take God to get me where I'm going, then my child of God, you need to persist. If that dream is so big that it scares you, then you need to persist. And here is why you need to persist. If anybody has told you it is impossible, if in your own eyes it is not possible, if everyone around you, if your family has said to you it is impossible, then you need to know that is the dream you need to push. A God-given dream will take God to fulfill it. A God-given dream cannot be fulfilled outside of God. A God-given dream will require that Jesus himself is involved. And the Father is involved. And the Holy Spirit is involved. But what is your role? What is your role? What is your role? Yours is to persist. Let heaven acknowledge that every day you make mention of your dream. Let heaven record that every single day for 365 days, for 10 years, every day you say the same thing to God, remember me. That every day you told God, remember my dream. That every day you say to the Lord, remember to heal me. That every day you say to him, Lord, remember my ministry. Remember the vision you've given me. But every day you're able to say to the Lord, Lord, remember me. Persistence. And persistence is only possible when we are on our knees. Every day. You pray until your knees are worn out, but you don't give up because God is just about to do something. If you will read about the greatest businessman in the world, you need to listen to their story. And you will hear how many times they failed. You need to hear the successful people. You need to hear their stories. And how they failed. But the secret to their success is not in how they failed or how many times they failed. But in them being able to see success in the middle of failure. And child of God, if you do not persist on your knees, you may watch your dream slip right before you. You may watch your dream slip right before you. How can you be at home, you don't have a job, and you sleep 6, 10, 12 hours? What do you call that? Comfort. How can you not have a job And you can sit back and you go to bed and you sleep 12 hours and you eat food morning and afternoon and evening and you eat everything but you have no job. Then you say, oh, I have no job. How will you get it if you don't persist? What happened to fasting? What happened to praying? You sleep 12 straight hours and you have no job and you're doing 12 hours? 12 hours! And then in the afternoon, you even give half in the afternoon. 15 hours! And you have no job. 
but you sleep 15 hours and then you say oh well i am believing god you know the man of god spoke into my life you and your man of god will perish and the lord says if only you will persist don't elevate prophecy more than principle principle is god's word prophecy is a tool God's word is standard. He says, if only you will seek me. And if you persist in seeking me. Persistence. So for you, you get one prophecy. Just one. One. Oh, the man of God. Oh, I honor the anointing upon his life. If you honor the anointing, pray. There's a difference now. Let me tell you today why people's prophecies don't get fulfilled. And it's all in the parable of the sower. It's explained in the parable of the sower. So a sower went out and scattered seed. And some fell where? On the roadside. What happened to it? The birds came and ate it. The second one fell where? On rocky soil. It grew up but because the soil was shallow it died the third fell where on thorns it grew but the thorns pricked it so it couldn't grow and the fourth fell where on good soil it yielded a harvest 30 60 and even a hundred you have to know that you are the soil we are the soil now when a child of god receives prophecy out of excitement if they don't know the lord and how to make that manifest this is what they do now the one on the roadside when they hear the prophecy they say oh the man of god spoke and they do nothing about that word which has been sown tomorrow what's going to happen satan will come and sweep it away now they are still holding on to something that has been swept long gone the second category of the people, the rocks. They are shallow in the word of God. They want the word of God that has been spoken, but there is no foundation for that word of God to grow. So they receive the prophecy, but because they know nothing about fulfillment of prophecy, it also grows a little bit. They will believe God for the fulfillment of the prophecy for one or two weeks. In the third week, they are done. They say, I think there's something wrong with that man of God. Now, then they begin to look for which man of God can speak a word and it happens now. In other words, they want a popcorn miracle. Popcorn. You speak now, it happens now. That's popcorn. You put it in now, now you're eating. The third category is the one, the thorns. So the word is spoken into their lives, but because they've got the excitement of the world, they expect the manifestation to come according to their terms. Even that doesn't yield. But there is a fourth category of people. The ones that know their God. The ones that know that when God speaks, he is not a man that he should lie. They will hold on to that word. Not by reminding the man of God, but by taking it to the Lord in prayer. And petition God day and night. And they will tell the Lord every day that, Lord, I believe that your word will surely come to pass because you are the Lord and I thank you for it. And every day they will wake up and say, Lord, I wait on the fulfillment of the promise. And they wait patiently, they wait persistently because they know that God cannot lie. Now that person will wait whether everything goes bad. They know if God spoke, it's enough. If God spoke, that's all I need. If God spoke, that's all I need. Now that person, the fulfillment will come. Pressed down, shaken together, overflowing. The fulfillment will come. So this is my question to you. Just how persistent are you with the Lord? 
I know the things that God has said to me. I have them written down. I have the debts God spoke those things. And every day when I meet people and we're in conversation, those who are around me, they know. And I always tell them that this is what God said to me. And this is what he's going to do. He's going to do this. He's going to do this. He's going to do this because he said that to me. Now, it doesn't matter when that will happen. All I know is that if God spoke, I'm willing to wait. If he spoke, what is it to me if it takes 10 years without happening? I don't care. If God said it, he will do it. If it takes 20 years, I have time. If it takes 30 years, I have time. If it takes 40 years, I have time. If it takes 50 years, so be it. Because I know, I know. And I know that God cannot lie. So my persistence is in constantly believing that God has got no reason to lie to me. What is your persistence? So my, I, I am confident in the promises of God. And everything that he has said to me, I am willing to wait and I am willing to bet that I will wait. God has spoken. What will I do? Will I panic? Because things don't seem to be adding up right now. Will I panic? Because things seem to be falling apart. Will I panic? Well, I panic because everyone is walking away. If everyone walks away, I will stick to the promises of God. Because God cannot lie. And if you have taken to him something in prayer, if you have presented something to the Lord in prayer, don't give up. Don't give up because the answer didn't come yesterday. Don't give up because the answer did not come last year. Don't give up. I've had people say, well, when I, I prayed about this for about five years and I gave up. People who give up, people who quit, they're not even recorded in heaven. This Bible does not have anybody who quit. This Bible does not have anyone that quit. This Bible only speaks and remembers those who held on to the Lord even when things were going so bad. Those are the people who are recorded in the Bible. In Thing did not make sense. I'm really sorry for you if you are expecting things to work in one week. And then you pray and you give up and you say, Oh, well, I've been praying. I don't know, but I think I've reached here. I've been praying and things are so bad. You've been praying one week and things are bad. One week. What about those who have been waiting 10 years and they still haven't given up? What about those who have been waiting 20 years and they have not given up? What about those who have been waiting for a child? 15 years and you're married and you're waiting for a child and you have been married two days. Two days. And you want a baby. Oh God, are you really going to answer me? Two days? Two And somebody has been waiting on the Lord 15 years, 20 years, and they are believing God for a miracle. And they are waiting expectantly. And they are so eager. They carry the same fire. They carry the same commitment, the same conviction, the same passion. And they know that something may yet happen. They know that God will answer one day. Now you get denied in just one job. One job. Then you beat yourself up. One job, but somebody has been applying a thousand times. Somebody has been persisting and applying and every day they say no. He goes back to the same place and applies. And they say, but you don't qualify. They apply again. And even the HR gets to the point of saying, you know what? If I don't give this guy a job, he's going to kill me. Because they're persisting every day and every day and every day. Does the HR know your name? There could be a thousand Joseph. But there will always be that persistent Joseph. That says I will not give up. I will apply every day. And every day they persist. And every day they don't give up. And every day they do it again. And again. And again. And again. And again. And again. And again.
So where are you standing right now? If you really knew Jesus, you would persist. Even when everybody says it won't work. You know that God can do it. So if you fail today, try tomorrow. If you fail tomorrow, do it again. If you fail again, do it again. If you knock a door, it's not opening, knock it again. If they don't hear you, knock again. If they don't hear you, knock again. If they don't hear you, you knock louder. If they are so far away, you knock again. Until somebody gets off his bed and says, but who is this guy knocking? Guy has been knocking, knocking and knocking. If there's this person you've been calling and they don't pick up, you call again. They don't pick up, you call again. You call again. You call if you mean to call one year. Call. Charge your phone and call. Because you don't know at what stage this person is going to say, let me just listen to her. But if you don't persist, that dream, that big dream you have right now, do you know where most of us begin? Do you know where most of us begin? I will tell you, when a lady is young and she's just come out of campus, you need to hear her prayer. Oh, dear Lord, if only you will send me a wonderful husband. And Lord, I don't want a man with children. Mm -mm. A man without children, he must have a master's degree. He must be tall. He must have small eyes, nice cute eyes. He must have a six pack. He must have a good job, a banker. Lord, make sure he's a banker. Anything else I don't want. He must live in a good neighborhood, Nalian Tinder, somewhere. Lord, don't bring in anybody, Chileka Banda, no. And Lord, he must be tall and really well built. And he must talk carefully. And Lord, he must be able to put on nice suits. And Father, make sure he loves coffee brown shoes. And he must not be a glutton. He needs to eat slowly and carefully. And he must love only me every day, every morning. Take me out. He must have a good bank account. Now that prayer, she's making it because she's 23. Then she begins throwing around her CVs, her CVs walking around, putting on those nice hot dresses, thinking that that banker will see her. 24, nothing. 25, nothing. 26, nothing. Now, usually when they're getting 27, 28, the prayer changes a bit. You know, Lord, okay, let it, okay, it may not just be a banker. Maybe he can be, okay, maybe an engineer or something, but not a plumber. <laughs> they, are still, I, they are still being specific with God. Ah, then now, Saturday, one, two, three, four, they say, Lord, you know what? Just send me a man as soon as possible. I am ready even today. Now, meanwhile, those small hot dresses they used to put on when they were finishing campus, 10 years down the road, now they've changed a bit. They're putting on worn out jeans and what. Then they got the fellowship and they're the most humble. Huh? Now they are saying hi to every man. Those days, they were saying, are you a banker? Now they are saying hi to everybody or mourn who, everybody. <laughs> Ah, I'm telling you. Now they're looking for Pastor Isaac in the corner and saying, hey, Pastor, you know. Before they were saying, Lord, not a pastor. I cannot stand to be a, rev a pastor's wife. No. No, 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 not even a reverend son. I can't. 
Then they see pastor. How they say? Is the pastor never? Is the pastor no? Kakati 39 40. Ha. Say, Lord, really? You have really forgotten me? Lord, really? Okay. Okay. Now that's when they develop a list. There are six guys on the list. Now the, the hunter has become what? Now she has a list. Lord, this is my list by faith. Tick one. <laughs> You want God to tick the ones you've picked. <laughs> ah, 45, 47. Ah, yeah, yeah. Lord, you know what? Even if he has children, it's okay. Even if he's a pastor, those children, after I love children, they can be my children. Then me, I can be the mother of the ministry. Now you want to be a mother of the ministry. At 40 what? 47. You want to be the mother of the what? Of the ministry. 52, you're saying, Lord, okay, let me just have a child. Let me just have a child and stay where? Home. Now, then at 50, she meets this boyfriend she, she threw out at campus. And he has got children, and the children are 18, 20. Hey, Bambi, these are your children. Mm, mm. Then they go back and weep. Those could have been my kids, Lord. <laughs> Those should have been my children. Then now you have the man of God's number on speed dial. What do I do? Is this elder in church? What do you think? God, really? Now you are, you are seeing an elder because you're also an elder. <laughs> you are saying, Lord. Now you want to be a pastor. Now you are in full-time ministry. Full-time ministry at 50 what? Now 55, you are in ministry full-time. You are settled. You are saying, let me just serve God. You have heard them say, let me just serve God. At 50 what? Five. Let me just serve God. Supposing you are persistent from the beginning. Maybe if you had stuck to God giving you that bank. You see... Maybe you change goalposts. Then the process, God did not know what do I do now. She said, a banker, now an engineer, but not a plumber, not a pastor. You don't want children. Maybe your husband is somewhere waiting and he has got a Camichelle here, a Chris here, a Shekina here. Are you seeing? <laughs> you, you know the things I'm saying? You know, I know you know. Now you're there saying, me and the husband with kids, no, 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 no. Kids, me, I become, what? No, no children, no, 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 no. And God says, it's okay, since you don't want this man with children, I'll give to a what? Another. Do you know how many people have missed their blessings because of that? Do you have any idea? That job you said, me, I can't take that. Me, a sweeper? Me to sweep? Do you know that they could be saying that you sweep, yet in actual sense, they are testing, will you take the job or not? Then they hire you, they say you are a sweeper. Then you say, me, with my suit, to sweep? Ha, eh? But you don't even know what God has, is doing. Child of God, may God give you a discerning eye. That you will see the things that God is doing without you despising them. May God help you not despise people that you meet on the road. Because the man you despise may be your next boss. It's possible. You pass the guy. You even insult him. He's in a small t-shirt. You're going to this organization and you're hiring there. That they have called you for an interview. You leave the boss behind. May God help us. So how does persistence work? Persistence works in you being able to hold on whether things are good or things are bad. Do not shift goalposts between your visions. If you have picked a direction to go, you stick to it. If you say that you are a pastor, my friend, be a pastor.
You know, it's interesting how the world is built. And how the world is built is how the children of God have children chosen to define themselves. Nowadays, I am sure that you guys have also seen in our education system, it's changed a lot. When, when we were, those days when we were going to school, there were courses like law. You remember those courses? Law and uh, everybody wanted to be a what? A lawyer. But there was an era for teachers. Everyone wanted to be a what? A teacher. They are the most paying. Now the world does things like that. The world goes for the things which are more lucrative at a given time. So now today there's, there's petroleum, there's oil and gas. There's, what else is there? There's so many of those things and, and everybody is going there. But child of God, did you know that God will exalt you even if it's just plumbing? And if you will persist in that, do you know that one day you could be the chief plumber in the country? I don't know if those things exist. You could be the chief plumber <laughs> and in the entire country <laughs> You're the chief what? And everybody knows you as the chief plumber, the whole country. I think those people exist. I, I don't know, but they must be existing. Now you're here saying, me, I cannot, I can't marry a plumber. A plumber? The plumber will fix your pipes for free. <laughs> the guy will come and say, oh, the pipe is broken. See, wait, no, that's easy. Give him mumpe ovro. Before you know it, he's in the overall and he's digging the compound. Why are you struggling? Plumbers are expensive these days. The guy will come and just put on his overall and before you know it, he has entered the sewage down there. He's removed the pipes, fixed everything. What I'm saying is, whatever God has placed you, if you'll persist in the thing in which he has called you, you will succeed in it. The success in the eyes of God is not determined by the cost that you do. It's not. I'll tell you a story. When I was in school, my mom is there. She wanted me to do law. I wanted to be an economist. For me, that was my plan. I passed economics. I wanted to be an economist. When I went to the Lord to pray, the Lord says I applied for mass communication. I didn't even know what mass com was. So I filled the forms without knowing what that course was. So I kept asking people, what, what is this course? I prayed and God told me to apply for mass com. I did not know God was preparing me to be a pastor. Here I am. Now my mom is there. I'll tell you her story. My mom was the one who persecuted me the most. She didn't want me to be a pastor. So my mother, yeah, I've told you story when she's hearing. So one day I'm, I, I, leave, I leave for the mountain. God has given me an instruction to go to the mountain 21 days to seek him. My mother calls me and says, what are you praying, praying all the time? How can a man run away from his home? She's there. He said, I ran from my home to go to the mountain to be there 21 days. And said, why don't you get a government job? I said, but I'm a pastor. He said, pastoring what? Get a government job. I said, where am I going to find this government job? I love to preach the gospel. Let me tell you, if there's anything which is rewarding, it is to serve Jesus. So if you're there and you're saying, me, I can't marry a pastor, my friend, you are lost. Because these days, pastors are the in thing. You know what I mean? Where is Pastor Isaac? He, he will tell you. <laughs> Who, listen, don't you want to have a medical doctor in your house for free? Don't you want to have a demon caster in the house? Don't you want to have a prophet in the house? Don't you want to have a Bible teacher in the house? Don't you want to have, you know? Come on, it's a whole package. Yeah, if it's the demon, the baby has a demon, you just get up. If you, if, if you need to see in the spirit, he will zoom. You know what I mean? If you need to, to pray for the sick and they get healed, it's very simple. Bring that baby. They will lay hands even when they are sleeping. In the name of Jesus. So marry a man of God, you women. Get, get a real man of God. A real one, by the way. You know, there's a real one and there's a... You know what I mean? So what, what am I saying? I, what I'm saying is that if you will persist in anything that you do, God has the power to exalt you. So don't despise work. You know, one of the days when people used to say, Oh, those pastors, those pastors. 
And then people are living in fear because they are pastors. My friend, these days pastors are educated. Yeah. These days pastors have gone to school. So you cannot begin kunyomaring the man. My friend. People walk away from, from many years of experience and they come to serve God. So it, it, it pays to serve God. Me, I'm telling you, it pays. You as Pastor Catherine, it pays to serve God. So if now, imagine now me, God has called me to preach the gospel. Then I say, you know, because plumbing is lucrative, then I leave to serve God and go and begin to plumb. So don't shift goalposts. You stick to what God has called you to do. If God has called you to be a worshiper, be a worshiper. If God has called you to be a plumber, be a plumber. Don't worry if women don't want to marry you. One day God is going to bring one particular woman who even loves the sound of pipes. <laughs> And when pipes are being pop, 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 says, yes, 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 that's my husband, that's my husband. Oh, that's my husband. When the children hear pipes, they say, oh, daddy has come. Dad is back. The smanners are making noise. Yeah, so you don't have to change from being a plumber simply because the women don't want to marry you because you're a what? A plumber. Come on. If you're a taxi conductor, if women don't want you one day, God will bring that particular woman who just admires how you call the what? The taxis. And says, oh yeah, that's him. That's the man I want. Before you know it, you're in the taxi, you're home. Don't ship goalposts. If you will persist. Now Satan's victory is in being able to get Christians to jump from here to here. To hear. So let me ask you a question. How many things have you jumped from in your life? How many? How many? Now you'll discover that your failure is in your inability to be consistent with God. So it's not just consistency in prayer. It's in consistency to do everything. Christians today, my, I have to tell you this. They will put out a seed and give to God. But they want the harvest in the morning. You know what I mean? They've sowed the seed today. But in the morning they want a what? They say, Lord, I sowed my seed. Where do plants grow like that? Because persistence with God in every area, in everything, in everything, when I say everything, it's everything. If it's a relationship, be persistent. If it's in business, you be persistent. If it is in worship, you be persistent. Because your blessings are only in one thing, persistence. So if you've been applying for the jobs, do it again and again and again. So what have you been doing? What has God asked you to do? The thing that God has asked you to do, it may require you doing it a hundred times over before it can work. It may require that you attempt it again and again and again and again. So just take, take stock of your life. Go home and take audit. Take stock. And you count how many times have you tried to be consistent before you can even think about being consistent with God, how many times have you been consistent with your own other personal things? Did you know that if you're not consistent with eating food, you become malnourished? Did you know that if you're not consistent in drinking water, you become dehydrated? And did you know that if you become consistent in consuming the wrong thing, you end up accumulating a particular disease. So persistence works in two ways. If you persist in consuming alcohol and smoking, even when you're born again, tomorrow you're going to go to the doctor and he tells you, I cannot see your lungs. 
Yeah. He said, doctor says, I cannot see your what? Because, <laughs> because of smoking. So they became as small as beans. So instead of you having two big lungs, you have how many, how many beans? <laughs> well, you know what you are doing? You are being persistent. Now, how does Satan destroy us? He destroys us by getting us to be persistent in doing the wrong thing. Do you know that the habit that you're struggling with will not go for as long as you're still persistent in doing it? It won't go. So persistence, when Jesus spoke about persistence, persistence works in two ways. It is not just only in the positive. Now, if your weakness is stealing, Satan will have you persist in stealing until that day. Listen carefully. Until that day, you steal from the wrong person. Before you know it, you have no hand. The chop of your right hand. What brought you there? Persistence. Child of God. Go back home and study Luke 18 again. Give yourself to Luke 18 again. There is a secret that God has hidden there. Do you know what really makes you wake up every day? to write proposals even when they've told you no every time that's the spirit of God do you know who wakes you up every day to pray for the same thing every day do you know who keeps you believing every day in the same thing do you know who keeps you hoping every day in the same thing do you know who keeps you on your knees every day for the same thing it's the Holy Spirit but Satan is waiting for one day when you'll give up. And every day is telling you, but why should you hold on long? Why do you keep praying for the same thing? Why do you keep on? Leave it. Then before you know it, pride slowly creeps into your heart. And before you know it, before you know it, you're walking away from your vision. And you're walking away from your dream. All of a sudden you become too big for your dream. You become too big for your vision. You become too big that you cannot even afford to humble yourself before God. Child of God, may the Lord keep pride out of your heart. That you will stay humble in his eyes even when that vision has been fulfilled. So tonight, make a covenant with God. We're going to pray shortly. Make a covenant with God. And you tell the Lord, I am willing to be persistent. If it is a political career, you can fail ten times. You don't give up. The president of Ghana tried to be president. I'm not sure which one. He contested almost four or five times. So what about you? Do you want to give up on your career because things didn't work yesterday? Do you want to give up because things didn't make sense yesterday? Do you want to give up because they prayed for you, you didn't get healed that day, you want to give up because you didn't get healed? If you will persist, there will come a day when that answer will come and you'll be grateful that you waited. You'll be grateful that you persisted. You'll be grateful that you held on. One thing I'll tell you is that when you're holding on, everybody else will say that you're foolish. And everyone will tell you, why are you holding on? Why are you there? Why don't you just quit? Why don't you just go? Why don't you let go? Start afresh. Begin a new business. Begin a new idea. Go and do a new course. That course I mean, you did tourism, tourism, you waited for a tourist job 10 years, go and do engineering, imagine, you're getting a man who failed math to go and do engineering, you're sending him to his grave. May the Lord help you, the son. May the Lord help you to persist. May the Lord help you to be consistent. May the Lord help you 
to hold on when everybody else says you should give up. You know where you stand? If that widow could persist, so can you. If you plant crops this year and they don't yield your harvest, you plant again. If you do that business and things fail this year, you try again next year. May failure be your reason. May it give you a determination to try again. And again. And again. The world will celebrate with you. The world will only celebrate with you. If you are victorious in the end. But child of God I will tell you. The world will crucify you. If things fall apart. Because you could not persist with God. In prayer. That's how the world judges us. The world will never judge you in any other way. There is no place for losers in the world's eyes. But in the eyes of God, there is room for persistence. There is room to try again. So if you don't get answered today, you go back again. If you don't get answered tomorrow, you do it again. If you don't get answered next month, there will be another month. Wait and try. But if you give up on your dream, if you give up on your vision, at least you will not forget that there was a message and there was a sermon like this one. And God made sure that you had it. So that when you give up, God, as you're saying, Lord, I, I don't know what happened. You know what the Holy Spirit will do? He will play for you a small video of me preaching. And what am I saying? Don't you give up. And I'm shouting it in your dream. Don't you give up. Then you wake up. Oh, oh, I saw Pastor Mark. You didn't see me. It was the Lord reminding you that don't you give up. May God bless you. I don't know who has been blessed today. If you have been blessed, shall we just wave our hands and say we've been blessed? That means everybody has been blessed. And that means in this room, there are overcomers and who are willing to persist. And hold on to God. Do you know, child of God, I have to remind you this. Do you know the defining moment of the life of Jacob? Do you know the defining moment? The defining moment of Jacob was not when he took the blessing of Esau. The defining moment of Jacob, it wasn't when he was working with Laban. No. The defining moment of Jacob was that night when he wrestled with God. And he persisted with God. Until God said, you have to let me go. Because it is almost daylight. The man wrestled, Joseph, Jacob wrestled with up to morning. And the Lord ended up saying, you have to let me go. And Jacob said, mm -mm. he said, I will not let you go. He said, I will not let you go. Except if you bless me. And the Lord said to him. That from this day henceforth. Your name shall no longer be Jacob. But Israel. Because you have wrestled with both man. And with God. And you have overcome. May God look you in the eye. And say. Because you persisted. Because you persisted. Let your name change. May that be your attitude. If Jacob had not persisted with God, there would never have been a name change. And today, the nation of Israel would not be here. But one man's ability and willingness to hold on and to persist with God changed the destiny of an entire nation. May you tonight be that person. Here's what I want you to do. Go down to your books 10, 20 years ago where you wrote down that first prayer request. Where you wrote down that dream, that vision that you walked away from. Go into your closet and pull it out. Dust it off. Remove the dust. And open those pages and go back to that first dream. Go back to that first vision. Go back to that first prayer request because I can tell you right now if your prayer request has changed over the past 20 years 
it is not out of faith but fear but the first prayer request you made back in the day when you just got and saved when you still had your energy go back there that was done in faith and that is the one you need to go back and say lord forgive me forgive me i'd walked away from this vision but now i am back here and i will tell you god will reactivate that same vision that same vision god will reactivate so don't you live in an atmosphere of saying now your vision has changed 20 times in 20 years god does not know what to do with you because you've confused yourself and confused him so you have to go back get that first prayer request when you just left campus and you're saying lord if lord me my dream every fresh campuser has a dream every fresh girl who is out of university has a marriage dream there is that first prayer request you made and you're saying lord for me i only want to work in the president's office go back and pull it out it's time next month next month the theme for next month you better key into it the theme for next month is enduring faith the faith that endures so next week i want you to do something for me go into your prayer closet and look go into your diaries and bring out the old diaries next week i want you to carry your old diary carry that old piece of paper where you put that first prayer request carry that first project proposal you ever wrote carry that application you first ever applied and they said no carry everything that has been on for the past 20 years bring it in this month of june of enduring faith let us put it before the lord and let the holy spirit revive everything that has been dead everything that you had given up on god will revive it so carry it remove it from wherever that dream you packed go and bring it you are dream to get married young go and bring it bring it god will make you younger even if you're 50. because there is a god in heaven let's clap for jesus please so please remember remember to carry that that business plan that failed you know the things i'm talking about don't you, do you know the things i'm talking about and you've had that book i have had this i've i have these books i don't know they think like 40. i still remember my prayer request when i just got born again in 2003 i have them written down somewhere i have those books so you also have yours go and bring it it's time for the lord to breathe some life into everything that died that's what we want to do next week tuesday that's what we shall do so whatever it is and it's taken years bring it to the lord we will lay it here on the altar and we shall anoint every one of those i'll i'll tell you what i'm gonna do we shall anoint every one of those books with oil we shall anoint everything whether they be land titles or land which was grabbed 20 years ago bring it you'll see what god will do we will anoint everything that is in the grave whether it is your ministry you began it and it died whether it's a project and it died if you have got documentation bring it bring it as old as it is next week next month is not for new things it's for god bringing to life everything which had died everything so we are going back to the first faith we are going back to the first hope we are going back to where everything began from when you were fresh in the lord and you are believing god for big things and along the way you got discouraged bring those things i really would like to see somebody's prayer request of 15 20 years ago when you are dreaming that you'd be the managing director of some organization and your dream was crushed i want prayer requests as innocent as those and as filled with faith as those it doesn't matter if the world has beaten you up so bad bring those before the lord i will personally anoint one by one and lay hands on them and we pray then you know that there is a god who said let there be and there was carry that next week tell everybody who hasn't come and those who are watching us online you too can present yours before the lord we will be praying it doesn't matter which country you're in i will be praying for everything that is dead so god can breathe life into it now 
I told you that if you have got academic documents, you remember I said that? I said if you have got papers and everything, today is what I'm praying for. Carry everything and put it here. Mr. Moon, come and move this and remove this pot as well. Please get up from your seat. Bring those documents. Don't bring your bags, please. A bag is not a document. Bring the documents and put them here. And we are going to pray. And you will see what God will do. So bring the documents and put them here. Remove this, Mr. Moon, as well. Quickly, please. You were here when I made the announcement. I said, bring academic documents. Please don't remain seated. We have no time. Bring them, put them here. If you haven't brought yours, I'm really sorry. But I asked for them and I told you to bring them. Do not bring any bag. Women, 